is awesome. What is a joy to come to you by way of television. I'm yes, Dr. Yes, Randall yes. Hall Walker, and I have my... My darling, darling, baby. <laughs> my sweet and sexy lady. Ooh, I'm on Christian television. Oh, Lord, God. <laughs> Give my awesome, wonderful wife a big God bless. But don't all love her. Thank Listen, you so we have an awesome show prepared for you today. You are going to be touched, moved, and inspired. This is going to blow your mind. You think last week was awesome. Well, when I ministered or shared with you the 10 top failures men fall into. You remember that show last week? Oh, yeah. It was, it was great. really great. Was great. I want to recap just for a moment and uh, share the 10 top uh, failures that men make in their marriage end up in divorce. Sheriff comes and brings the paper, and you go, what is this? <laughs> uh, now you know that uh, these 10 top failures is the reason why men end up in divorce. And guess what? On the set today, my awesome, extraordinary, powerful wife, Bradella Hall Walker, is going to share the top 10 failures of women today. Yes, Let's I give am. the Lord, let's go. Yes, yes. So I, I, I tell you what, I'm anticipating, I've been waiting for this moment because I want to hear uh, the top 10 failures of a woman. To know that my wife is willing to admit these top t uh, failures with women is incredible. Because, uh, listen, I was not proud at all last week to share with you uh, the 10 top failures of a man. I, I was humbled by that. Here, let me give them to you real quickly. Number one, stop noticing your wife. Number two, allowing yourself to be rude to her. Number three, constantly reminding your wife that you're the boss. Number four, making the children her sole priority or, or sole responsibility. Number five, disregard your domestic duties. Won't do nothing around the house. So you disregard everything. Number six, not home. Always working. Always working. Never at home. Number seven, silent partner. Won't even talk. Just around the house. Won't say nothing. Number eight, begin to call her bad names. Ooh. -hoo. Boy, you're going to end up in divorce court real sir. Let me, let me tell you something. Begin to call her names. Number nine, tell her if she doesn't like it, she can leave. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Last but not least, the reason why men end up in, in, in divorce court is they keep being the jerk they are. <laughs> well, listen, I tell you, that's, this is exciting, and my wife is now going to share. Again, call a friend, call a neighbor, call a co-worker, call somebody. And tell them to say, Randall and Bradella Hall Walker during the Greatness broadcast is on, and uh, invite them to come and and uh, just to call in and listen. If you are in the Charlotte area, don't hesitate to come visit us. Freedom Worship Center, Charlotte, 4732 Old Pineville Road, right at Woodlawn. Come visit us. We'd love to have you. You'll have an exciting time here at Freedom Worship Center, Charlotte. Or email us at Journey to Greatness BC at Gmail. Dot com. Now, I'm going to turn it over to my darling, darling baby, <laughs> Bradella Hall Walker. Give her a big welcome. Uh, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you all so, so much. I'm really excited about doing this because it does humble you. It does help you to see some of the, the ways that have hurt the marriage, yes. the things that women are doing also. And so again, yes, it, it is uh, um, a challenge to share. Of course, I haven't done all of these, <laughs> but they are the 10. I'll be the judge of that. Top, <laughs> 10 top failures. And I said they, the 10 top fail, failures that will drive your husband right out of your life. Wow, this has got to so, be good. I've given 10, they're not necessarily in order. And the very first one that we're gonna deal with is nagging. Wow, wow. No matter what he does, she complains. And, and I came up with an acrostic on nag. Mm -hmm. N-A-G, meaning in needing A, attention G, guys. She's just needing attention. Oh. That's what nag is. So that's what in the issue a is. Need 
attention, guys. She's really needing attention because what I believe is happening here mm -hmm. is that her expectation of the marriage may not be where she thought it would be. And so she's inside, she's complaining. Mm. Things aren't going the way that she wanted, so she's nagging. And if he doesn't get the point, again, here we go with a failure. Well, of course, with and, and that is so powerful mm -hmm. because I can imagine living in a house you know, the Word of God even talks about uh, that a man would be better off on the housetop, you know, than to be in the house with a bat nagging woman. <laughs> right. You know, uh, uh, nagging can really get on men's nerves because, number one, we have a space. Men have a space that you all don't know about, and that space is our privacy that we connect, and it's like a box in our head that we don't, we don't want anything in that box. Mm -hmm. And when we, you're nagging and nagging and nagging, then you're putting stuff in our box. And so well, that box is that box is reserved for just us. And uh, we don't we don't want you putting stuff in there. You're putting a lot of stuff in that box and we're getting frustrated. And so that can create a real problem with us. And so but it's good to know that you're reaching out. See, a lot of men don't know mm. that the wife is reaching out. Yes, according to my lovely uh, sweetheart, she's saying that when a woman is nagging, she's reaching out to yes, you. Thank you so much attention. for sharing yes. that with our viewers. Yes, that wonderful. That is so true. Yeah, because we, we see it as you, you, you filling up our box. That's, <laughs> that's all we see. You know, you're filling up our box, it's getting full, and listen, we like to keep it empty. Okay. You know, we like to keep that box empty with nothing there. Right. W wonderful. Yeah, but, and so that's that's what's really going on with her. There's something happening inside, and she doesn't know how to say it, mm. so she nags. Wow. She complains. No matter wow. what you do, she's going to complain. Yes, I can And if the man that. doesn't uh, pay attention to that, he won't understand where she is. And just like we said, it will drive him right out of her life. Mm. And number two... Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Wow. Unforgiveness is a big issue in a marriage. If something goes wrong, what I did was I said, I'm not never letting go of what the husband did to hurt her. Wow. Constant reminding him of his fault. She won't leave. And her motto is this. If I stay, you will pay. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, whoa. Oh my goodness. That's of a truth. I wow. know it is. Listen, a truth. man, this is great for us to know. <laughs> so so in other words, if you've been sentenced, you gotta do your time. <laughs> <laughs> She'll stay there, but deep in her heart, even though there's a bit of forgiveness, there's no wholehearted forgiveness because it's you hurt me, you embarrassed me, you did this, you did mm. that, and I'm willing to live with you, but every once in a while she's gonna find a way to make you pay for what you did. She's gonna wow. remind you, she's gonna dig it up, she's gonna go scuba diving. <laughs> you threw it in the sea or God threw it in the sea and she went scuba diving for it and she's gonna bring it back. Wow. It will drive the man right out of your life. He won't know what happened, but it's, it's called lack of forgiveness. So women, I'm saying to you, learn to forgive and forgive quickly. You have two choices, you either forgive and let it go or for, or don't forgive and leave. Wow. Well, men, and also sharing sharing this was so awesome. I want to encourage you that to realize, okay, hey, you 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 did the crime. You got to do the time. Okay. <laughs> so whatever you did to hinder the relationship, you got to ride that out. Yeah. Because so often we want to bail out. And we want to say, well, I'm not taking this. Yeah, I made a mistake. Yeah, but she just keep rubbing it in my face. She keep nagging. She keep rubbing it in my face. Nah, 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 nah. She just keep on keeping on. I can't take this. You got to take the pressure because she needs to know that everything is resolved. And then she needs to know that you love her. And she know if she put that pressure on you and you stay, then you prove yourself for a long-term marriage. That's and that's right. good. That's, right. that's good because what is happening, right. yes, what's happening is she doesn't feel that you really repented for what you did to her. Oh. She's not feeling it. And the minute she does, the minute she 
she feels that there's is re, there's repentance, then she's going to see change in you, yes. which will bring change in her. Yes. Mm. And so that's why the unforgiveness is there. And that's why the model, if you stay, you will pay, yes. remains until she comes to that place where she knows that you've changed. Because there's still some things that are probably going on that she see. Yes. That is reminds her of what you did, yeah. Wow. Yeah. and because you don't look like you repented, you're not <laughs> acting like you repented. Then that's where number one, the nagging comes in, mm -hmm. and number two, the unforgiveness remains. So when I said, if you don't want to live with it, women, he's gonna leave. He's gonna leave. But if you can't live with that then you have to make a choice as to whether or not you can. Wow, that's good. That's good. Well, listen, I want to encourage the men that's listening who you're watching me by way of television, and you can identify with this. I want to encourage you to weather the storm and prove yourself, because what I'm hearing from the opposite sex is that you have to prove yourself. Yeah. And now, uh, you're proving, yeah, pride going before destruction. Mm -hmm. That's so right. So you don't want to get caught up in pride. And for God's sake, don't think the grass is greener on the other side. That's because right. what can happen is you will find yourself out looking in than being <laughs> in trying to look out. So your marriage is worth saving. Yeah. Uh, your marriage right. is worth fighting for. And if the wife is hurt, devastated, unforgiveness, it's up to you to prove yourself and to help her to overcome and walk her through that. Walk her through that pain and that hurt. Right. And then you'll see that it would be such an appreciation for you because, listen, you ministered to her. And because you ministered to her, then she can in turn minister to you. That's but true. she can never That's good. minister to you as long as you haven't ministered to her. That's true. But the moment you have, then you'll see things turn around, you'll see things change, because she'll know uh, that, that you're, you're, you have changed because right. you're doing things right. different. That's true. You're not doing the same thing over and over again when she done told you 2.8 <laughs> million times that it gets on her nerves, okay? You stop doing it because you love her and God gave you that precious woman and you want to cherish it and you want to love her. That's good. That's good. And, and, and again, when I said that, that, um, that she may leave. There could, it could be anything. It does not necessarily have to be a physical abuse or, or, or verbal abuse. It could be anything that really hurt her. Like last week when we spoke about calling her names, mm -hmm. that breaks a woman's spirit. Yeah. She does not want you to call her name, and she'll begin to live that and then throw it up in your face, especially if you call her stupid, mm. especially if you call her ignorant. She going to do something, and then you're going to come and ask her why she did it? Guess what she's going to say? You said I was ignorant. You said I was stupid. So what else do you expect from me? And that's how she's going to act. Wow. And so we don't want a circus in, in, in the marriage. And that's then right. you had even said something about the grass. Sometimes men think the grass is green on the other side. It may yeah. not even be grass. It may be turf. So you better pay attention to where, what fence you're jumping over. That's good. That's you have good. to pay attention to that. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, we're going to move to number three. Now, this is a big one. This is a big one. Spending money with no budget in mind. Oh, that is a Women, big one. Oh, yeah. Whether you work oh, or he yeah, work yeah, or both yeah, of you yeah. work. We have to get to a place of not just spending money. and But there's a reason for it. It's either because she didn't have when she, before she met you, and now she's gone overboard. There's just no balance yeah. to where she's going. Or she just she just became very um, spin, uh, I guess, frivolous in her spending, and she just spin. And then the funny thing about it is she's feeling guilty about it. Mm -hmm. So what she may do is she'll go out, say, for instance, let's look at shoes. So she'll go out and do two things. She'll buy shoes and tell the salesperson, I don't want the box. Just put them in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then you take them home. Or if you get home before the, the, the husband does, 
And then you hide them. You leave them there for about a week or two. You're anxious to wear them, whether it's clothes, shoes, purse, whatever. And then you pull it out. And then he says, oh, I've never seen that before. Oh, I had that a long time, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the, I, I'm, un, I'm unveiling us, ladies. I really am. Please don't throw a shoe at me or anything because I'm guilty of, um, Maybe this one. Uh -huh. I, I think I've done that a couple of times. But the guilt comes in after a while, and so you don't want to do that anymore. So be honest. If you have to spend, at least you to talk about it, or are you going to spend, talk about it. But don't go out and just spend money knowing you don't have it. Don't spend your rent money. Don't spend your electricity right. money. Because your shoes cannot pay that bill. That's right. A new dress can't pay that bill. And a new purse, I remember... Um, uh, I was talking to a lady one day and she had this beautiful purse. And so I won't name her, but she had this beautiful purse. And I was like, oh, I like that purse. Oh, my husband got it for me. I said, oh, that is so awesome. So we're all together. Her husband's there. We're all there. And she's got the purse on the table. And he said, uh, um, where'd you get that purse from? And I'm standing there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know the rest of that story. I don't even have to go any further. Okay, we're not going to say anything else about that, but I just want to let you know, don't go spending things, spending money that you don't have. That's and even good. if you do have it, be respectful with your husband and discuss it with him because it hurts. Even though you, the, the man may not say much, it hurts him to see his wife spending like that, and he doesn't want to call her dishonest, but it is dishonest mm -hmm. when she comes out of the closet because she's hitting some shoes for a whole month, and then she comes out with these new shoes, and, and he's like, I don't well, believe this. I know you mentioned about the shoes, but, <laughs> but you know, there's a oh, there's always been something that I want to ask a question to you. Uh, you know, I look in your closet, and I see all of these clothes. I mean, I see clothes in this closet. I see it in th that closet. I see it in the closet around the back and, and our, our closet, all of these clothes. And then you say, I don't have any clothes. Now, I got one, one rack of suits, okay? I got it. And you never hear me saying, I don't have any clothes. Uh, and I only have a few suits. But I got clothes. I can change them up. I can, you know, ch put on the pants and put on the sh uh, the jacket and change it up. But you never hear me say I don't have any clothes. And I o often wondered about women, and I hear them always say, I got to go shopping. Uh, we got a young lady in our church that, uh, uh, and, and uh, we, we call her Miss Cutie, and she's always saying, I'm going shopping. You know, she loves to go shopping. And so uh, help me to understand okay. what's this whole deal about going shopping. As a matter of fact, I can't stand shopping. As, as a matter of fact, I, 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 I run into the store, see something, grab it, pay for it, and I'm out of there. And if I can get two pair to last me a while, if I got the money, I'm going to get two pair to, so I don't have to come back for a long time. I can't stand shopping, okay? Uh, but it just seems like some, I remember my wife, though, one day she just wanted to go to the mall and walk around the mall. And I said, well, I'll, I'll go and walk around the mall. And then, of course, uh, she saw some things she liked, and I bought them for her, okay? And it was a wonderful day together as we were walking in the mall and enjoying one another. Now, that's different, and we had a little budget there that we could spend some money, and so that was a good time. But I often wonder why they love to go shopping. Can you help I, me there? I can answer some of those questions. Now, you brought up personal about m me having clothes in all the closets. Absolutely. Well, it, it's because they're seasonal. Oh. I have summer clothes. I have winter clothes. I have church clothes. I have play clothes. I have work clothes. I have clothes to lounge around the house. I have after five clothes. So we're seasonal when it comes in and, mm. and we're trendy. So we, we're going to have all kinds. Men buy suits 
And you wear that same old black suit until it's shining. Absolutely. You wear it to a, you'll wear it to the banquet. You'll wear it to a breakfast. You'll wear it to <laughs> church. Well, women aren't like that. Women yeah. want something new on. And when new fashions come out, they they want to be. It's not a competition with anyone else. It's just they want to be the first to wear it. Wow. And that's good and stuff. so it is. They don't. They don't want to spin like that, but because the 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 the, um, the stores, everything is so pushed towards new, fashion, trendy. We're going for the shoes. At one point, it was the flats, like here. Mm -hmm. Now we're up here. <laughs> okay, and okay. so women want to wear. I won't put them on because. I won't be able to move in them. They're just too high. But yet I can find shoes that are, are comfortable. Like we went to a wedding the other day. I had no shoes to wear for that wedding. I had to get shoes to match the dress. Right. I'm so that's what women do. And that's okay. why they do what they do. When they go shopping, it, sometimes you just walking. You're not really shopping. And I, I think the term shopping is just... Uh, used loosely. It just means I want to see what's out there. Well, that's great. Yeah. Listen, man. Yes, yeah. that's one. Listen, is. man. This is good. This is good to help us to understand women. And so what I'm hearing is that they like to be free and uh, we want a happy life. So if you want a happy life, you're going to have to have a happy wife. <laughs> and so in order to have a happy wife, you're going to have to give her the freedom. You don't want to put her in bondage. You want to say to her, honey, here's a uh, hundred dollars. Go, go shopping and enjoy yourself. And if she says, come on, go with me, for God's sake, go with her. You better go. <laughs> but you know what? When, when you see women who love shoes, uh, you have to keep in mind, too, that women are more business now. We have so many yeah. women in the corporate world that are wearing For suits. Sure. So every single day is a new suit. When you're wearing a new suit, you're wearing new shoes to go with it. So everything is matching. So you'll see uh, uh, the, uh, he, the husband has built her a closet with nothing but shoes mm. to go with uh, the other closet with nothing but her suits. <laughs> wow. And that's the way it is. And we're, women are so business today. Their they're, they're fashion, the hair... Uh, uh, a lot of them are wearing their girls, as they call it, which are wigs, but we call them girls. They're wearing that. The makeup is all geared towards fashion. Mm. And and in order to to fit into that world, you uh, or to fit into your business world, they're expecting a particular look from you. Oh, okay. So the business world, you can either be just so high class where you have to be in heels and suits every day, or you can be casual business casual where you're in pantsuits but you're still changing every day your shoes have to change the colors everything is just so different and it's difficult women aren't saying it's difficult but and they may love shopping but if they want really to sit down and really think about it it's really hard on us knowing that i've got to compete out there knowing right. i've got to change in order for me to fit into that business world it's not that they want to really do it it's just that it's it's part of the way the world has set it up for us now. Wow, that's And that's why we're stuck there. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. All right, this one is very difficult, but yet at the same time, it's very true. Most people will not talk about it. They won't even talk about it in their marriages or even in marriage counseling. So I just made it number four. It is withholding sexual pleasures. Whoa. When the woman gets angry Rated with the man. Here. Okay. When, the ang when she gets angry with the man, this is the powerful weapon that she used to get back at you. Uh, so men, I, all I'm asking you is don't use this as a means of resolving issues either. Mm, that's good. But the woman will use it as a weapon and because she knows you. She knows what pleases you. But you've made her angry. And your uh, pleasure has become her displeasure. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's I don't know good. if I need to say more on it, but we we women try not to do that. Right. Well, men, I want to I want to I want to say uh, you know to to share a little bit concerning that because I think 
what can happen in a relationship like that if you feel like your your wife is not being uh, uh, caring and loving towards you, then you begin to look in another direction. And for God's sake, keep your eyes on your wife and minister to your wife because the enemy uh, that wants to destroy you mm -hmm. and your reputation can easily lure you in because your wife's mad at you. And then here come uh, Miss Cutie Pie uh, grinning and skinning and tipping and dipping. And uh, next thing you know, you you know, got your eyes in the wrong direction because something is not going on good at home, because there's a problem at home. And when there is a problem at home, that's a time to tighten up. That's just the sign to tell you, tighten up. <laughs> you know, that's the sign to tell you to get on your A game and tighten things up. If your wife is not happy, because uh, as I alluded to earlier, a happy wife is a happy life. And so we are, have a responsibility to take care of them, provide for them, make them happy. That's what we're called to do. And we being the stronger uh, individual, they are the weaker uh, one. I mean, the word of God is clear that the wife is a weaker vessel. Even though she appears so strong and you, you might think that she's all that and then some over you, but she has what is called an equalizer, and that is her mouth. And a lot of times, because uh, you, <laughs> a lot of times when they're nagging and when they're uh, fussing at you, that's their only recourse that they have to equal up to you because you are the stronger one. And you don't sometimes realize that. Sometimes we men don't realize the influence and how strong that we are. And so I want to encourage you to make sure that we humble ourselves in front of our wives and let them know that they're precious, that we care for them, and they're the apple of our eye. That's good. That's good. Adding to the, that, the, the man, a lot of times, sometimes, I won't say a lot of times, sometimes it, it, the, the sexual pleasure is very physical, where with a woman it's very sensual, it's right. very intimate. And he may not necessarily be wanting for the right reason, even though that is his wife. If she's angry with you, that is not the time to resolve an issue. That's the time to love her to love her through it, and she will easily give herself to you. She wouldn't have a problem knowing that the hurt, you came, you caressed her, you, you helped heal that wound. Mm. And the, she'll, she'll find that, that won't, uh, that's a weapon she won't have to use anymore. She can put it away. Yeah, that's very good. You know, you know um, I've been in ministry full time for probably about 35 years, but there was a time for about a year or two I sold cars uh, back in Florida. And what I would notice is that when men would send flowers to their wife, you know they messed up. And so one of the things I want to encourage is to think about our wives on, on days that are not special days, to just, just think of them on a, maybe a Saturday morning, Hey, honey, let's go out to uh, breakfast together. Or, or while you're out, pick her up a rose. Not because y'all fighting. Not because she mad at you. Not because she upset with you. Not because you made her mad. Now you want to try to make up to her by buying her something, giving her a flower, buying her a ring. That's not the time. You know, um, I talk about building your faith before storms, before trials, before tests before you go through the difficulties of life. Strengthen your faith before. Well, I'm going to say strengthen your marriage before you run into a problem, before difficulties come. Have a strong marriage so when the storms of life come on that marriage, you can weather the storm true. because you built up a good relationship before the trial, That's before true. the test. So it'll easily blow over. You can just reach over and say, sweetie, I'm so sorry. And she'll just say, That's all right, baby. <laughs> that is so true. I, you know, I, I didn't know that that was how uh, people felt. And one day, you had sent some flowers to me just because there was nothing wrong, just because. And so one of the ladies on the job says, ooh, you and your husband were fighting last night. <laughs> I went, no. 
No, and and that was their thought, is that the only reason why you get flowers on the job is because there was a fight. So when I got home back, I told my husband, don't you ever <laughs> you send sure me did. any flowers to my job ever again. <laughs> sure did. I did, because I don't want that thought that's a terrible way to think. You should be able to get flowers just because. But so, and he got, so what he did was he got me one silk flower and I keep it at my desk. And I've had it for years. Yes. So that flower is a remembrance of the fact that he loves me. And you don't have to send me flowers that's going to die in a week anyway. <laughs> so I'm okay with that one flower. Okay. That's awesome. And it means a lot to me. So here we are, moving again to the next one. What number are we on? We are on number five. Okay, great. Being jealous and insecure. Ladies, Ooh. what happened? What made us jealous? What did he do mm. to put you in that position? Or what was your history prior to that that made you jealous that when you got into this relationship you didn't let go of that baggage Ooh, so you're always thinking that, that your is husband good. is cheating on you you're always thinking that something is wrong you're calling him all day long where are you honey <laughs> when you coming home hang up 10 minutes later where are you honey when you coming home you said you were going to be home 10 minutes ago and you still haven't gotten home what are you doing who are you talking to you hear people talking in the background who is that you talking to i hear that woman in the background <laughs> all this drama going on <laughs> but what happened that we have to take a look at ourselves search our hearts and find out what put us in a, a position to be jealous of our husbands that will drive him out of the out of the house and into the arms of someone that he would have never gone into if you hadn't continued to nag. Mm. Wow, that is that is that that is so great. Wow, that's now that's a lot of food for thought there. Yeah, that is a lot of food for thought. Uh, I want to just encourage us men that we as men we have to make sure that we are loving our wives at all times and that they're secure because why 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 are they insecure because number one keep in mind women marry the number one reason is for companion uh, excuse me for security mm -hmm. men number one reason is for companionship mm -hmm. but that's not why that the wife number one reason is companionship she marries for security yeah. so the moment she's threatened the moment she's insecure you got a problem that's right i mean the moment she feels threat and you got to see the warning signs and you got to deal with that you cannot just allow her to continue to be insecure and wondering where you're at looking at your phone and and seeing who you're talking to and, and and following you stalking you to see what you're doing after work to see if you're really out with the boys you know that's a problem yeah, it that's is. a problem it so is. you have to make sure that that wife of yours who i know you love you want to make sure that she's secure that she's not worried about where you're at and what you're doing that she knows she can trust you because once that trust issue is broken you got some serious problems that's true once that trust issue she can't trust you then she's always going to be suspicious hi i'm dr randall hall walker what a joy it is to come to you by way of television and share with you journey to greatness broadcast if we're being a blessing to you would you be so kind to consider going to our website and giving a generous gift so we can stay on the air? Go to fwccharlotte.com and click on Give and support the ministry so we can stay on the air. Thank you so very much and wish God's very best to you.